in practice. Everybody getting into the act. Durant fires for three. Our own Charles Barkley, who joins us via telephone from an undisclosed location to talk about uh, this opening week, Christmas. We roll out a, lo a lot of LeBron. Chuck, do you think you'll be able to cover enough LeBron against the Warriors during the course of this season? <laughs> I'm, you know, between the last six months, I'm lebron out right now. But, you know, the Lakers going to have a good, solid team. I think they're going to battle for a playoff spot. Um, but they're not a contender. Let's be realistic. They're not a contender. Uh, but, you know, he's the best player in the world, and we're going to show him a lot. And, Charles, we know Philadelphia has a soft spot in your heart. Do you think that now Embiid and Ben Simmons and a the few moves they've made, are they ready to take another step in the Eastern Conference now that LeBron's out of the Eastern Conference? Well, I think it's a three-team race in the East between Toronto, Boston, and Philadelphia. You know, obviously Embiid and Simmons are terrific. The key is going to be Markel Fultz, whether he can play or not. To me, he's the key. I love them going out getting Wilson Chandler. I think that's an upgrade. But it's going to come down uh, to Markel Fultz. What's going to be fascinating, the two things, is, is Kawhi Leonard invested in Toronto. Because if he's invested, they're just as good as everybody else. I think that's a big question. And secondly, the Celtics. I think the Celtics... It's going to be interesting watching that team play because people, it, it, they just assume they're getting two all-stars back. Like it's just going to all fit together. Let me tell you something. I saw Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum play. They're not going to sit around and watch Kyrie and Gordon Haywood shoot the ball every time. Those two young kids are terrific. And anybody who thinks they're just going to say, hey, Kyrie and Gordon, y'all shoot all the shots and we'll just stand around that, to me, is going to be very fun to watch. Chuck, speaking of pieces all fitting together, the Thunder at the Warriors, second part of that double dip. Last year at this time, I remember when we rolled out the schedule, we were all talking about that new big three. Mello now verbally agrees, moves on to Houston. But I think a surprise to a lot of people was the fact that Paul George was loyal to Oklahoma City, didn't go to the Lakers, didn't go back home. How about this team? Maybe because of Melo, maybe not, but can they be a better version of the New Look Thunder this year? I think they're the sleeper in the Western Conference. I think they're going to be much better. That's like if you go back and play our interviews from last year, I didn't think that big three was going to work. Uh, I, don't, I didn't think it was going to work at all. I think they're going to be a much better team. I think they don't have to answer the questions about Paul George. So now their big three is uh, Paul Russell and Steven Adams. I love the addition of Schroeder. I think he's a good backup point guard. I think he's going to help them. Also, they got Nerlens, uh, Nerlens Noel. Uh, I think he's going to help them. So to me, I think Oklahoma City might be the second best team in the Western Conference. And sticking with the West, uh, Chuck, do we think this year the Warriors could be a little complacent? Yes, they're bringing in Boogie Cousins, take his time, don't have to worry about playing to the playoffs. But do you go for... A little complacent now you've been to the mountaintop so many times in a row? Well, I think, number one, I don't think they will because they're just better than everybody else. Uh, they're just better. And I think Boogie Cousins got a lot of pressure on him because, you know, number one, if they don't win, he's going to get the blame. But also, he wants a big contract. So uh, I think it was a great addition uh, at a minimal risk. I can't believe some other teams – didn't take a chance on him for like $5 million. I know that's a lot of money, but that's chump change in NBA circles. I mean, a lot of teams should have taken him at that price because he's going to have to play well. I mean, he wants a big contract. And, you know, being around that organization, uh, I think it's going to be great for his maturity. Uh, but, listen, the Warriors are just better than everybody else. Listen, the, 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 the Rockets, to me, took a step backwards losing, losing Trevor Ariza. I think Trevor Reese is one of the most underrated players in the league. Uh, so I really think they take a step back. But, listen, my sleeper team in the West is probably going to be Oklahoma City. I think going to be much better this year. Charles, uh, I know you were very high on the Raptors. Uh, I guess two-part, A, have you apologized to the city of Toronto, which I know you love for jinxing them? And B, do they maybe go under the radar? Are they still, I, you hate to call a number one seed a sleeper, but because of all the attention Boston and Philly are getting with LeBron out of the conference, Kawhi comes over. Is, is Toronto maybe not getting enough credit right now? 
Well, everybody's going to automatically give the Celtics the, the number one seed in the Eastern Conference because, listen, first of all, they are loaded. But like I say, it ain't going to be easy to fit all those players together. Uh, but Toronto, to me, listen, I think that's uh, they, they got a really good team. They had the best bench in the NBA last year. I think they're going to miss Jacob Poto because he was terrific. But getting Kawhi uh, and Danny Green, uh, I think they – I think they're better, uh, but also I think the Spurs are better. I think getting uh, DeMar DeRozan and Potal, that to me is another team that's going to be a sleeper. You know, you don't, you, you know, you plug in an all-star and a really good bench player to a team that made it to the playoffs last year. You know, Coach Popovich is going to want to prove something, so that team's going to be pretty good. I mean, the West is loaded. Uh, you've been hanging out with Shaq enough, Chuck, that you call them Jacob Potal. You mean Jakob Pertle? You know what I meant. You know what I meant, fool. <laughs> we got you back, Chuck. We got you back, buddy. We got you. Who, hey, who he play for? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We're in summertime for him, Chuck. Chuck We're in summertime for him. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of your summer, man. Good to catch up with you for a couple. We'll see you here in October, okay? Okay, my brother. Hey, man, you guys keep up the great work. Uh, you know, you guys do a fantastic job. And also, Casey, I see you haven't grown over the summer. <laughs> I see you haven't shrunk over the summer. <laughs> Bye, Chuck. Correct. Come on. It's summertime, guys. Behave. We're it's mid-season form. Here's uh, Charles Barkley.